Konnichiwa, squad. I know I'm fashionably late on this one, but as they say, it's never too late to join the adventure. Yosh, let's kick things off with my absolute favorite known thing. That's GTK, of course, and most specifically GTK 4.18. For those who don't know out there, GNOME 48 comes with the GTK 4.18 series, GNOME 47 featured the 4.16 series, while GNOME 46 used the GTK 4.14 series. And the pattern continues. If you care about stats, in around 6 months we've seen approximately 1,800 commits, with 72,000 insertions, and 47,000 deletions, excluding documentation and assets. These numbers are actually typical for a GTK release. Oh, and by the way, there's already a GTK 18.2 version that adds a bit more code to the mix. But either way, 4.18 doesn't really look like a big release, but it packs one super sweet new feature that will make developers super happy. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Kinda. So, there's now an Android backend you can target your apps to, basically meaning your app should run in Android without much of modifications. But there are two enormous drawbacks in doing so. First, your app should be written on C, although support for more languages may come in the future. And second, there is not documentation how to actually use that, so you're pretty much alone. Ouch! It's almost like a challenge. GitLab has a CI job that builds a signed APK of GTK4 demo, so you can check how it works. It's basically using this script here. But my honest opinion, I have attempted many times to build a GTK example for Android and keep facing total defeat. The GTK418 series also brings two new Wayland protocols. The first one is the Cursor Shape Manager, and the second is the Color Manager that's basically opt-in, so by default won't be there. The Cursor protocol basically defines an enumeration for cursor states, sets those cursor images, and describes 34 different cursor shapes. The benefit? Your cursor will render perfectly on any compositor that implements Wayland protocols, which means there is also a new Cursor Shape protocol implementation in Mooter, Yep, yep, so other apps will work better under GNOME, too. The color manager tells the compositor about the color properties of their content on surfaces. And by doing this, it enables the compositor to perform automatic color management of content for different outputs according to how content is intended to look like. Which, I think it's actually needed for having HDR in GTK clients. A super nice change is that the GTK font chooser now scrolls to the initially selected font, so if we select a font from here, the next time we open it, it will have this font selected. There are various enhancements in accessibility, like the improved events and state change notifications, also a better key binding and shortcut representations, and there's a new access kit backend too, that works both in Wayland, Windows, and macOS. That backend is opt-in and is considered experimental because it doesn't currently support every widget like VT, the use of portals is now opt-out, it was opt-in before, and if you've been having that kind of issues that portals sometimes would take forever to open, well, that has been taken care of too. On the rendering and graphic space, there is a more streamlined Vulkan experience with a better handling of fractional scaling and an improved performance. For example, GSK could sometimes illegal render ops with fractional scaling, creating visual artifacts like those. More visual artifacts could cause by a wrong calculation mitmap, so mm, that's been fixed too. This bug report appeared on an Apple system with the Vulcan driver when some poor user attempted to resize the window in Loop Image Viewer. GTK 4.18 also gets rid of the GLL render, but don't get scared. That's the old GL render with the GLS2 support being retired. There is still a more modern GLS backend that uses GLS3. And besides, since GNOME 47 GTK defaults to Vulcan anyway, at least under Wayland. Speaking of drops, we finally have the removal of X11 backend. Alright, alright, I'm just kidding. It's only a deprecation for sending a clear message that this backend is gonna go away in GTK5. But this motherfucker ain't happy about it. You've probably heard about the new font, but that's not all. There are tons of tweaks and improvements in font rendering, particularly effective with font hinting and high DPI displays. Plus, there's an update on emoji data and enhanced emoji insertion logic. Cool! Also cool? The support for native macOS window controls has been added to the GTK window controls class because, um, like it or not, portability matters. So, GTK 418 closes around 160 bucks, but that ain't all for GNOME's toolkit. Libaweda also got an update from version 1.6 to 1.7, packed with around 260 commits, a whopping 25,000 insertions, and 4,000 deletions. And there are some pretty nice things there. First of all, we have the new adaptive preview that helps developers to adjust their apps for smaller screens and users to easily submit issues without testing it out on actual devices. 
And I'm not trying to review anything here, but let's be honest, GNOME software looks like phone intolerant, ouch. And like every other ad way to release, this one comes packed with a few more widgets too. There is Wrapbox, that behaves like a GTK box, but it can wrap children onto additional lines, so it can create things like tag clouds. And this widget might come in apps like Nautilus, by the way. Mmm, squad. Is it legit to say Nautilus, by the way, or it should be only Arch, by the way? <laughs> The inline view switcher is also a new widget in 1.7 that it's like add weight of view switcher, but it can be used inline, for example, inside cards. And since we're an animations page, there are also some new easing options. Another new option is the sidebar position on navigation split view. We can set it either on start, so the sidebar will be the root page when collapsed or at the end. And in this case, the content will be the root page. That's how overlay split view works, basically. But if I had to make a complaint, I would like if Adwaita had more abstract containers and far less widgets. Because most of the times applications need very specific displays, really, don't you think? Hmm, perhaps Adwaita 1.7 doesn't bring a massive new visual effect, but actually, if you take a moment to read through the changes, you'll discover there are so many of them, and they are virtually everywhere. For instance, there are lots of sizing fixes throughout both GTK and Adwaita that improve consistency in width for height and height for width cases. All oh, right, all oh, right. That's practically impossible to miss even without reading anything. Unless, of course, you've already changed the default fonts. So in GNOME 48, we have Adwaita Sams, which is basically a variation of Inter, and Adwaita Mono, which is a customized version of Yosefka font designed to match Inter. And these new fonts are replacing Cantorell and Source Code Pro. And not only are they light years better by design, but when you add all the new font rendering improvements, you quite possibly get the biggest visual change in the entire GNOME 48 release. It's not just a GTK thing, but going back to GTK, we have some changes in banners. Um, basically, the banner now gets a more neutral color, and the buttons can now optionally use a suggested color. Toasts are now lighter and opaque, aka more clear. The UI colors throughout Adwita styles are now very slightly tinted towards blue instead of using neutral gray color, and Tab Overview is now using a darker background for light style and lighter background for dark style to improve contrast with thumbnails. Also, widgets like buttons are now slightly more rounded. There are a few more UI changes here and there, and here comes the problem with all those. So it's very likely to have an application that runs on an older GNOME SDK for whatever reason, like because the maintainer is simply lazy to update and push. For example, Flatseal here runs on SDK 47, and then some other app may be fully updated to the latest GNOME SDK, in this case, Settings runs on version 48, okay? It can happen, it will happen. And I don't know if you guys can see this on the video, and if you can't, you can test out yourselves anyway, but the background colors of these two apps are quite different. New Adwaita colors owns big time, but at the same time, this is a serious consistency issue because it's color. It's important. It's obvious. It sucks. So add to all those the more than 700 commits in glib that hopefully among everything else will also give better language bindings. And that's pretty much what's new on GTK for Gnome 48.